I really appreciate the opportunity to chat with everybody this evening. Um, really excited to talk to you about what we're doing uh, in 5G. Um, much like my colleague Stephen Chirac, um, a recent addition to, a relatively recent addition to Microsoft. I spent five years in the federal government before that doing a stint as a DARPA program manager. Um, and I lead a team focused on spectrum technologies and really using our cloud to enable and empower uh, radio frequency and wireless signal processing to take place using Azure. Tonight, I want to talk about a very specific type of radio technology, and, and that is 5G. Um, and I'm going to try and serve as a bridge between our, our last talk and, and the space community. Uh, and then I'm also going to try and connect that through 5G out to the edge and then um, hand it over to Jim to talk about uh, really bringing Azure to the edge. So first and foremost, we need to talk about why 5G is suddenly a big deal for governments and maybe why 4G or 3G or any of the previous generations of wireless cellular technology um, were really not as big a focus. And the, the key here and the answer really lies in the virtualization or the cloudification, if you will, of 5G. Um, 5G is the first radio technology that really embraces cloud as a, a principle, so the principle of its design. And because of the way that cloud technology is embraced in 5G and because of the way that uh, 5G is really virtualizing a lot of the processing that happens in a wireless telecommunication system, it suddenly becomes very attractive from a government perspective because now we can think about taking a 70, 80, 90% solution that's largely built on top of commercial investment. And now we can invest 10% more on top to create militarily or government relevant technologies. So on the top of this slide here, what you see is uh, a traditional radio architecture for a cellular system. So all the way on the right are devices. So your, your cell phone or a tablet. Um, and then those devices talk to cell towers that are um, uh, fixed infrastructure. They're connected to something that's called the radio access network that does all of the, the waveform processing that makes 5G be able to connect between the base station and your handset. That's then connected with a large fiber network and eventually connects back to something that's called the network core um, running in, in data centers. And so traditionally each of these sort of key elements of a cellular technology are proprietary. They have locked in standards and, and in 5G, a lot of those walls are now being torn down and we now have virtualization of each of those key components. So of course, you know, we can't virtualize antennas and, and uh, cell towers themselves. Those are real physical devices that exist out in the real world. But once we get behind the antenna, now we can digitize and virtualize the rest of that processing. We can virtualize the radio access network. We can virtualize the, the, uh, the wide area network and the software defined networking that interconnects radio access networks to then the core network, which can also be virtualized. And so as you can see, all of this virtualization now adds up to being able to run 5G on the cloud. So last year we announced um, a new organization within Azure called Azure for Operators that is focused on taking our cloud and our telco DNA and our ability to run 5G on the cloud and creating a, a cloud offering for telco operators. And so what I'd like to do now is show you how do we take that uh, telco DNA that we're building on our cloud for telco operators around the world. And how do we actually then leverage that and, and make that a capability that we can use for government? And that's where 5G for government comes in. So at the bottom here is Azure for operators. That's of course our, our telco DNA and our cloud and, and making telco relevance on cloud. And on top are the three areas of additional investment where we're really taking Azure for Operators technology and we're tailoring it 
to make it <clears throat> relevant to government. The first is in the area of mission criticality, right? It's very important that for critical government workloads, especially for connecting over 5G as a wireless technology, it has to be high reliability, has to be adversarial, uh, resilient to adversaries. Um, so we need to create that mission critical DNA. The next is really about security. Obviously, in the government space, we need to be able to use these 5G networks to communicate unclassified for official use information. We need the ability to communicate secret, top secret, uh, and, and other classified information, which means that we need the capability to run 5G in an IL-5 and IL-6 cloud environment. We also need to bring zero trust. It's important that we actually make sure that we are connecting the right users into these government 5G networks and that even if, let's say, the fiber in between um, a radio access network that a government user is using and the core of the network, even if we don't own that fiber or we can't trust that fiber, fiber, we still need to be able to effectively protect that user's session and all of their data. And the last, and I think now hopefully you can start to see the pieces coming together between space 5G and edge, the last capability that we really need to bring to bear is expeditionary. So often when we think about 5G or other cellular technologies, we think big towers, you know, planted into the earth, transmitting at high power, they don't move, they're static. Um, but of course, that's not how the government or the military conducts operations, right? The DOD, for example, is an expeditionary force. They need to be able to go anywhere in the world and respond at a moment's notice, which means Suddenly, we now need to make sure that 5G is a portable technology, that it can move around the world and that we can provide it, for example, backhaul capabilities uh, by bringing satellite communication and connecting it with 5G. We need to worry about things like how our allies are maybe also using the same 5G technologies and how we can make all of that mesh and how we can do spectrum management, a, a, a need, of course, that exists in the commercial space but is heightened in the, in the DOD and military space. So these are the three areas that we're investing in. And, and now what I really wanna show you and what I wanna leave you with is I wanna leave you with a couple of examples, in particular in this last column of combining expeditionary capability with 5G. So Stephen Schrock did a great job uh, teeing up what we're doing in space and how we're actually turning our data centers and our data center footprint and our worldwide fiber into the backbone for global communications for the space community and SATCOM community and folks like SES and SpaceX. What we can then do with that infrastructure is we can now actually take the radio access technology, sort of that first portion that uh, we virtualize in the cloud immediately behind the antenna. And now we can put that capability anywhere in the world and we can take the rest of the network. We can take the software defined networking, we can replace the fiber, we can replace the core of the network, and we can take all of that technology and push it back into the cloud. And so that means that now as, let's say a, a military member, you can bring 5G with you anywhere in the world, and you can use a satellite connection to connect it back to the cloud, and we power the rest of that in the cloud. I want to give you an example of that here in action. Let me roll the video. So this is what we would call a private 5G uh, or private LTE network that is using uh, a satellite backhaul to connect that network back into Azure. And all of the smarts that make 5G work, you know, handle device registration, handset registration, et cetera, all of those capabilities are actually not living out at the edge in this example. They're actually pushed back into the hyperscale cloud. And you can see that if we go and ask what our address is, it, it's showing us where we are on the earth um, and that we're able to effectively combine 5G technology, satellite technology and the cloud to provide a low swap, small form factor capability to bring 5G with you anywhere. Now, of course, if, if you're in the DoD, um, you may wonder, well, what happens if my backhaul is challenged? What happens if I am operating not in a permissive environment, but I'm op operating in an adversarially challenged environment? 
And in that case, we can now start to look at how we combine our edge computing technology with 5G. And so in the first example, we put all of the 5G smarts back here in the cloud. But now what we can do is we can actually take those exact same technologies and we can push them out onto an edge computing platform, our Azure Stack Edge. And we can then push the 5G capability into the field. And what this now does is it creates resilience so that if your satellite backhaul goes away, your 5G network actually continues operating in the field. And leveraging that um, Azure Edge platform, we can now push advanced capabilities like cognitive services out to the edge. So you can envision now enabling a capability like soldier AI that's able to identify people and objects out in the world powered by cognitive services, but take advantage of things like the space backhaul to create a virtual common operating picture that is pushed back into the hyperscale cloud. So this was a really quick taste of what it looks like to combine 5G space and edge to create truly new and unique warfighter capability. Unless we have time for questions, I'm gonna pass it to Jim Perkins to take us deeper into the edge portfolio.